Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, for being with us. As we're talking about the creation of new water, this is really a topic that's going on all across the globe, all 214 countries and territories, is that we're running out of the groundwater and in some places, even the surface water, but yet they're still having increased rains in many countries, as well as most of the East Coast and sometimes in the Midwest of the United States. So how do we take the stormwater, groundwater, whatever it's being called in your local community, and capture that, process it, and then put it to good use? I have a real expert that's with us. This is Brian Rogers. He's the Director of Conservation and Sustainability, Constituent Services Worldwide. And we're gonna be talking about the rain barrels, the use by the homeowners, and how do you curb stormwater runoff so it's not creating damage, and being put to good use. Brian, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Hello, Sam, how are you? Now, looking at the uh, collaboration, CSW, your constituent services worldwide, and the DOEE of Washington, DC, why do they actually work with contractors such as yourself to, uh, program, to make this program and expand the River Smart Homes and the River Smart Communities Project uh, beyond the government itself? Well, uh, good question. Uh, one of the reasons is that we are more in touch with the community at large in a lot of respects. Uh, we are kind of their vehicles for information and spreading, uh, spreading knowledge. Also, though, uh, it's more cost efficient to use contractors rather than use uh, federal employees or district employees mm -hmm. to do these kind of projects. We can mobilize quicker and faster. Right. And also you have the expertise. I wanted to kick off with this because what we're really focused on uh, in uh, this show, Brian, are the homeowners and why they want to be involved in the project. So we see this sign here, clean water starts here. How is that true? And how does this rain barrel right behind this mom with her two children uh, emphasize the fact clean water starts here? Well, this is this is one of the first vehicles of any good program is to get your population wanting to participate. And uh, through this program, uh, homeowners get to actually learn about how using things like rain barrels and rain gardens help to serve great, to treat gray water mm -hmm. and therefore treat the, make it easier on the streams and, and byways to, uh, to have cleaner water. So mm -hmm. this is just one step in a multi-phase multi process, but everybody can participate in this program, the River Smart Homes program is very good at showing how home, individual home owners can make an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it's absolutely a marvelous idea. Something that I suggested uh, to the department many years ago was to do something that's very natural, uh, increase the water tables, and at the same time, cut down on the loading into the streams and rivers with these severe storms that's happening more and more these days. This is really a cute idea, and this goes to this whole thing about involving the community, particularly children. Why is it so important to have children that we just saw here uh, involved in painting the barrels and 
uh, being a cute, but actually a very necessary part of this particular program, Rain Barrels by for the homeowners. Well, Sam, that goes back to the ed education factors. By getting youth to participate in this, the message goes home because they convey to their parents what they did today. Mm -hmm. Also, as you can see on these barrels, it's all sending different messages about what they feel about the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. We had a great time. This was a part of the Hickey Run Heroes program where uh, Langdon Elementary School uh, were the, was the uh, group that whose students participated in painting these barrels. Yeah, I think this is absolutely marvelous. But it doesn't matter what age you are. We're all young at heart. Uh, and we're using these rain barrels in very different ways. So we have some that are using it for their their home gardens and and uh, yards, and others are part of these community gardens, similar to what we're seeing here with these raised grow beds. So how many different uses of rain barrels are there, Brian? As many as you can count. You got to realize that even before this became more popular in urban cities that in underserved countries, in underdeveloped countries, they were using this to, because this is the quickest way to catch water mm -hmm. and have it for them for themselves to use to cook with right. and do other things, wash everything. So this, this is nothing brand new. This is just new to urban cities and its uses. Right. So in this case, you see here, this is a part of a project that UDC put in uh, in association with River Smart Communities, one of the other arms of the River Smart Homes pro uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, and they constructed about 80 community garden beds. So the residents in that community now can have fresh fruit and vegetables and the rain barrels helping the water. Yeah. And also, too, this is really great exercise. It takes people out of their homes, puts them in the fresh air. Uh, they're processing vitamin D from the sun. There's so many benefits from this, but these uh, raised grow beds are just uh, fabulous because so much of the biomass that would go into the landfill or go be washed into the streams, all of a sudden that's now creating mulch and uh, allowing people to grow their own food. Uh, but here's a very different configuration. Uh, and also it's tied into uh, what we call house and a greenhouse. Yes, uh, this is a, what you refer to as a cistern. The difference between a rain barrel and a cistern is, of course, the amount of water it can contain. Cisterns run about 20,000 gallons mm -hmm. or more, and that's what's considered more of a cistern. Rain barrels or anything pretty much under that. Mm -hmm. This is connected, though, to uh, either a hoop house or a greenhouse. And therefore, it's used, being used in one form or another to process water or, or uh, could be used for irrigation in the fields. So it, is, it could be serving, as you can see, there's uh, some electrical devices attached to it. So therefore, it could be serving multi-purpose, have, have a multi-purpose setting. Yeah, and this looks like it's actually a sun tracker, too, as far as a solar panel is concerned. And that yeah. may be used both uh, for the greenhouse and then also for pumping the water. So there's multiplicities of uh, green technologies in this one photograph. Now I threw this one in here. This is a, a real monster. We're going to see it again in just a minute. Uh, but tell us about this and why are these larger units becoming now almost as popular as the barrels? Well, in most cases, you'll see things like this very underground. Uh, to serve to be used to do things like, especially like at Woodson Senior High School, they have cisterns buried and they're used to flush their uh, toilets mm -hmm. in the in the school. So in this scenario, though, uh, this homeowner had a situation where she was actually capturing stormwater of a huge rooftop on the left and on the right a garage rooftop. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to contain all that water and capture it because one of the things that were, was happening is that it was going over to their neighbor's yard. So here's where this technique is used to help not only keep good neighbors as, as good neighbors, but to solve uh, a home issue. And the reason I, I 
brought this photograph and now I have this photograph, which is uh, the one we've just seen. And I'm putting it as how you have this monster. And then all of a sudden, it's just like it disappears. And this is the whole exactly. thing about it, Brian. Many people say, do I want something that large in my yard? And uh, But actually, you can camouflage. You have different colors, uh, different ways of using these. So it's it's just really incredible how you're adapting this to what's called the built in bar environment or uh, the inner areas. But this is another use. Tell us what we're seeing here. And uh, I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, these are the rain barrels. Jump back. OK, what's going on as far as uh, the guttering is concerned? Well, this is a location over in Ward 8 where UDC has uh, two hoop houses where, where you, you grow seedlings. And of course, it's built on the Sahar top. So as you can see on the left, that there are stormwater issues when, when the water comes off of the rooftop. So what they did was install a gutter system. And eventually what we're gonna do is not only do some trenching to channel that water toward a conservation planting, mm -hmm. but also attach uh, rain barrels so that we can use the water to water that same conservation plant. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, actually going for aquaponics, hydroponics uh, application, but actually having and capturing this water like this and putting in these much larger rain barrels, which are actually on the inside of the building. And we're going to see some samples of this uh, later on. Uh, but this is amazing how you can uh, reduce the amount of water you're taking out of uh, here, DC water, out of the municipal water supply and uh, using the uh, the natural water it's coming in. Well, actually, Sam, what you're seeing here is uh, an aquaponics system. And in those big, huge containers, usually are schools of fish. Mm -hmm. And what the system does is that they take the fish excrement, ex excrement and use it as a, a source of nutrition for mm -hmm. the seedlings and plantings. So this rain barrel here is connected to that for some internal purpose in the in the system. Mm -hmm. And that's just one more way you can use a rain barrel. I tell you, it's just amazing the way of doing it. Uh, we're going to go through these again. Uh, we have so much to discuss, Brian, and thank you for being with us. Uh, but I'm going to go through this. Just tell us what we're seeing as we stroll through these different rain barrels. And then I'll have a final question. Well, this is kind of some of the unique situations you run into when you got to put a rain barrel in and somehow homeowners are thinking of innovative ways to use their barrels. And then this one is underneath the porch of the house. So that's how that one's going to be used. This is, again, under, uh, under actually a deck. So this one is used because there's a, a small garden planting in front of this one. This one is a unique situation because as you can see, there's a tube, there's a hose running from it. So it's used to plant, to water the hostas, but for, to get the water out better, it's also set, set up on uh, eight cinder blocks instead of the normal floor to give the gravity more force to get the water out better. This of course is uh, the daisy chaining of two hydro barrels. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see one has a red spigot and the other has a plug. Well, that red spigot part is going to be used to go into a, a raised garden bed. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's just uh, marvelous what you're doing. Uh, last question is, and you've got 10 seconds, what do you see for the adoption of rain barrels over the next five, 10 or 15 years by homeowners? And you gotta be quick. Well, it's, as stormwater and, and environmental issues develop, this is going to be one of the methods we help to manage it. That's fantastic. Brian Rogers, uh, the Constituent Services Worldwide, thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet.